I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you very much for joining me today for another one of my videos. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing my favourite sewing tools. So I've been dressmaking, I think, for just over three years now. So I have accumulated a few different sewing tools over those three years, although I do try and limit how many I buy because I'm fairly short on space here. But in this video, I'm going to talk about my favourites that I use on a regular basis, the ones that I find most useful and the ones I'd really recommend. So hopefully you'll find the video interesting and you might find a new tool there that might be useful. Um, but yeah, I've got them all here ready to share. So in terms of my favourite sewing tools, I thought I'd start off by sharing my favourite sewing tools for cutting out fabric. And I've got three pairs of scissors I use on a regular basis when I'm cutting out fabric. And the first pair is my favourite dressmaking scissors and my sort of go-to scissors that I use for cutting out all types of fabric from jersey to sort of viscose to cotton. And these are Fiskars dressmaking scissors. And I find them really sharp and comfy. I'll link this and particular pair down below in case you're interested. But yeah, I just find them a great all rounder for cutting out all different types of fabric and comfy to use too. I've also got a little mini pair of Fiskars scissors. I think these are called embroidery scissors. Again, I'll link them down below. They're quite small with quite a sort of small little um, blade. And I find them really useful for things like snipping off threads and um, cutting little notches and any detail work. So those are my two pairs of Fiskars scissors I use a lot. I have also got one other pair of scissors that I use quite often. And this is a pair of John Lewis. Um, I think it's a, maybe a pair of general craft scissors. And I was bought these by my mum when I first started dressmaking. And I did originally use them to cut fabric, but I found they weren't really sharp enough and they weren't really sort of um, yeah, cutting well enough, which is when I invested in my Fiskars scissors. But I still use these quite a lot. Basically, I use them on anything. I don't want to risk spoiling my nice sharp scissors on. So I often use it for things like cutting out interfacing and those sort of jobs. So they're quite handy still to have. And they're just not as nice and they're great for yeah, jobs that I don't want to spoil these ones for. So those are my three pairs of scissors I use on a regular basis. I do also have a rotary cutter. I've got this Ulfa um, 45mm rotary cutter and it works really well. I do rate it. And I will use it sometimes, particularly if I'm working with a really slippery fabric where I'm worried that the scissors might sort of shift it out of a place when I'm lifting up slightly to cut. I use the rotary cutter, but generally I do prefer using scissors. I find I'm more accurate with scissors. I just enjoy cutting things out with scissors more. So my Ulfa rotary cutter doesn't come out quite as much. Oh, I just realised actually there's one more pair of scissors that should have been in my dressmaking tin. I just found out because I've been using them recently. And that is this pair of scissors here which is just a really basic pair of normal sort of everyday scissors. And I bought them because they're pink and I do like a bit of pink. But I use these ones all the time for things like cutting out pattern pieces or the actual um, pattern tissue paper. If I'm making adjustments, I use these too. And they're quite nice because they're not as bulky as my dressmaking pair of scissors or the other pair that I use on the interfacing and things. They're a bit more lighter weight and easy to use. And I use those all the time. Um, yeah, so they're my other pair of scissors. They're nothing special, just a pair of average scissors, but they do get used a lot. <laughs> my next couple of favourite sewing tools I use all the time aren't very exciting, but I find them so handy. The first one is um, rulers. I've got a whole load of rulers because I, like, I, I find I'm always losing them and leaving them places. And I find them so useful um, for measuring out adjustments to pattern pieces. I often use a couple together. I'll lay one um, on the grain on the fabric and then measure across the line on the pattern piece at different points to make sure that the fabric and the pattern piece is sitting exactly on the grain. So I use my rulers a lot. And also alongside my rulers for pattern adjustments is my sellotape dispenser. I find it so handy to have a nice sturdy dispenser of sellotape because when I'm in the middle of sort of fiddling around with pattern adjustments, I can just pull a piece off the end. I don't have to worry about the fiddliness of, sort of finding the end of the sellotape and pulling out and cutting. So yeah, I really love my sellotape dispenser and I love that it's pink too. <laughs> I've got a few other larger sewing tools to share with you and then I'll share with you the contents of my sewing tin, which is all my go-to items that I use on a daily basis for sewing that are slightly smaller. But my larger items I use quite a lot are firstly my pattern weights, which I've got in this little tin here. I do love a tin for sewing stuff. These are my pattern weights here and I made them myself. When I had to look online when I started sewing, I thought that a lot of the sewing pattern weights were a little bit pricey. So I thought about how I could make them myself and I found a few recommendations online for using metal washers that you can just get on Amazon, fairly cheap. You get a big pack of them, putting a few together and then winding round wool to create little, um, little um, pattern weights, which is what I did because I had some leftover yarn. So it's quite a thrifty way to have some pattern weights. I think there are about three or four little metal washers put together in here. I basically put as many together as kind of 
created the weight I wanted. And I've got a whole, whole load now, plenty for using when I'm cutting out fabric. So yeah, and I quite like they're all different colours and they're all kind of unique to me. My next larger sewing tool that I use a lot is one I got a couple of years ago. And when I got it, I wasn't sure if it's something I would get a lot of use out of or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. And it is my Taylor's pressing cam. And I've used it so much, I find it such a useful tool and so good for getting the sort of finish you want on garments, be able to press them on this slight curve, I think makes a world of difference. So much easier than trying to press them on a flat ironing board. So yeah, it's a tool I've used so much. I'll link it down below. Again, it was just one from Amazon that seemed to have good reviews. It has been so useful. I do also have a tailor's sleeve roll. I don't find I get quite as much use out of the pressing ham. That is really my go-to pressing tool. My next slightly larger sewing tool is one I got fairly recently. I think I got it for a Christmas or birthday quite recently. I always find Christmas and birthdays a great time to put a sewing tool on your list if you want to try something new. And then if you get it and don't use it too much, don't feel too guilty because it was a present, it was supposed to be a bit of fun. And it was this one here, which is the Simflex Expanding Button Gauge. And I found it so useful and got so much use out of it already. I know a lot of patterns do always already specify where you should put buttons on, but sometimes you want to adjust the button placement slightly to either maybe add an extra button or slightly move where they sit for your own body shape. And I find it so useful for marking on buttons. It makes it so much easier. I used to use a ruler and sort of measure between them, and this is so much quicker. And more straightforward so i guess it isn't actually this big it gets big but it actually stores down quite nice and small so it fits nicely in my limited sewing space anyway and again i'll link it down below such a handy little tool then in terms of larger sewing tools i thought i'd mention the tracing paper i like to use because i find that is one of my most useful and most used sewing tools i'm a big tracer i don't like ever to cut out the pattern itself i really like tracing because i do often make quite a lot of adjustments and then i can know i can always go back to the original pattern again but the tracing paper I really like to use is this one here. It's Birda tissue paper, and I usually just get it from Amazon. I'll link it down below. But I find it's really nice tracing paper. It's substantial enough not to tear too easily, but equally it's um, lightweight enough so you can see through it the pattern lines. And I just find I, yeah, really like using that one. So that is my paste tracing paper. I get through a fair amount of that um, because I do like to trace out my patterns. My final larger sewing tool that I like to use and use quite a lot is this really handy Gutemann thread matching book here. And this is one I got in the lockdown because I was really struggling to match threads to my fabrics without being able to go to a shop and like having a look at the thread and how they sort of matched. And I found I ordered some threads online and had a bit of a guess based on the colours online and sometimes they came out okay and sometimes they really weren't right. So I discovered this existed and I asked my husband to find me a copy and he found me a copy, but it was quite hard getting hold of it. So unfortunately I don't have a link for this one. It might be one that requires a bit of research to see if you can get hands on one. But I'll show you what it looks like inside. It's got all of the different Gutemann sew all thread colours in here. I'm all laid out by colour. It's really useful and you can take them out as well. You can take a little line out. So if I get the greens out, so you can hold it up against different fabric and figure out the perfect thread match. So it's been so useful. A really handy item. I love it. Um, and I wish you luck in trying to find one because it's such a useful item, but they do seem quite hard to get hold of. But there's my Gutemann thread matching book. It's called, um, I'll show you the details, the Gutemann Mara, in case you want to try and look it up. But it's been so handy and it's quite nice and easy to store just along with my sewing books. So those are all of the larger sewing tools, my favourites that I use on a regular basis that I'd really recommend. But now I'll show you inside my sewing tin and a few more items that I use really regularly. And the first thing I thought I'd show you is my pins and clips. So I am a big fan of Wonder Clips. I've got a little um, load of them in this plastic bag here. It's not the most beautiful carrying case for them. But I find them really useful and I use them wherever I can. So I just find them a lot less easy than pins. Um, they don't snag fabrics, they hold them together really securely, they don't fifth and um, sort of slip out. Um, yes, yeah, so I really enjoy using Wonder Clips. I've got a load of those and I'll link them down below. Um, so I definitely prefer them to pins for a lot of uses. But I do find that pins have their uses too and I've got two types of pins I like to use. The first ones are these flower head pins, they're quite nice and long. And I find them really sharp, so great for kind of using on delicate fabrics and also great for kind of pinning a garment you want to cut out because they're quite long so you don't need to use too many of them like you would with smaller pins and I've got them stored on this magnetic um, pin cushion which I really love too. So those are my first type of pins I like to use along with my wonder clips. I also find they're quite useful on things like 
setting in sleeves and things where wonder clips might sort of not kind of be able to capture the slight sort of wave you have in the fabric and things it might sort of squish it down i find them useful in that sort of thing too or gathering and then the other pins i like to use are these little glass head pins here I think they're by Prim. Again, they're on another magnetic pin cushion. I find these pin cushions really good and I'll link them down below too, if I can find them online. And I find these really good for little fine details. Again, they're nice and sharp. So on, on items where I want some sort of finer, smaller pins, I use those instead of the flower head ones. So those are my three sort of clippy and pinny go-to items. Another really useful tool that I use a lot is my hand sewing needles. And I've got a little hand sewing needle sort of um, holder here, my needle minder. So in here I've got all the sort of needles I use for the hand sewing jobs. I've got some sort of thicker ones like this one, which I think is a knitting, um, a knitting needle, which I use for sort of thicker jobs like sort of um, threading through overlocker threads and tying in overlocker threads. And I've got some finer ones too that I use for sort of fine hand sewing, like sort of slip stitching edges and things. And they're all in my little needle minder here. And my mum made this one for me out of felt and with some hand sewing. So that's not something you can buy online, um, but... I think any needle minder would, would do. It's just all those hand sewing needles that are the useful tool. And this is, I guess, really useful to hold. It looks quite cute too. The next thing I've got that I love is my prim um, round dish for storing all of my bobbins in. I used to store them in my sewing machine in this little front pouch there. But then I got a few too many of them. And also I wanted space in there to store my feet. So I sort of kicked them out of there and I got this little bobbin minder. And I try, these are all the bobbins I have. And I don't want any more because I think otherwise it just gets a bit overwhelming. So it's quite nice. They just fit on there and stop me from acquiring any more different threads. But they keep them quite securely there. That's quite handy. And again, it's quite nice and sort of, um, sort of stretchy and easy to sort of pop somewhere quite easily. It fits in my tin quite nicely. And I'll link this down below. I think it's quite cute too, seeing them all in there. I try to keep them colour coordinated, but sometimes they do end up moving about a bit. And I'm doing quite well at the moment because I've got three. They're empty. So that's always good. My next favourite sewing tool is one that I've researched a bit to find the one that I like best and it's my way of marking lines and darts on fabric using some sort of chalk type pencil. And I've tried a few different options and I've come round to my favourites are these here which are hemline chalk pencils and you buy them in a pack of three to so get a blue and a pink and a white. And I did buy a set one time that had a different lid to these ones. They had a white lid with a brushy bit on top I guess to kind of brush the chalk off once you'd used it. But they didn't work half as well as these ones with the matching lids, which might sound a bit random. And I don't know whether they're made slightly differently or what, but these ones just work so well. So I really love these ones. And I saw some recently on Hobbycraft website and I hadn't found any for ages and mine were getting really short. So I snapped up another set because I just find they work really well. So yeah, I definitely recommend these ones with this lid and I'll link them down on Hobbycraft in case you're interested in those. I have tried these um, sort of chalk pieces here, but I haven't got on with them so well. I definitely prefer the pencils. And more recently for Christmas, I got, or birthday, I got this Clover Chaco liner, which has a little sort of a wheel on the end and it kind of rolls out chalk as you roll it across. And I thought I might quite like it, but actually I have found that I do love these pencils the most and they're the ones I go back to over and over again. These little hemline chalk liners are definitely my favourite sewing tool for marking lines and um, anything else like that on fabric. My next favourite sewing tool that I use all the time, and I think probably most dressmakers do too, is this little one here a seam ripper and I don't have a particular preference in terms of brand or anything for a seam ripper but I do think there is quite a lot of variety in terms of how sharp they are so I think it's one of those things that I definitely keep an eye on and if it gets too blunt I would consider replacing and when I started sewing I inherited my granny's old sewing machine and there was a seam ripper in there and when I tried using it, it didn't work at all I think it must have gone quite blunt so yeah I know there are ergonomic ones out there I think you can buy a prim ergonomic one which is a bit more chunky and maybe more comfortable to hold I don't really mind. I find these fairly comfortable to use as long as it's quite sharp. So that is my current one. I'm using my seam ripper. The next thing that I use a lot as well that's really useful is a point turner. And I think this is a bamboo point turner. And I think I got this um, on a whim one time when I'd ordered on, I think it might have been the Sony Sunshine website and I was just below the postage level. I had a look at their sort of haberdashery items in case there was anything there that I thought might be useful. And I saw this and thought that would be really useful. I haven't got one of those. So I got it from there, but I think it's just quite a generic bamboo um, point turner. I think there are lots of them out there you can get from anywhere. But I find that really useful and I do use it a lot for turning out points and making sure everything's nice and sharp. Um, and it's quite nice and gentle. I think it's bamboo, it's still fairly soft. So although it pushes out nicely, I haven't ever had it damaging any fabric, which is good. Whereas I have had a couple of instances where I've used knitting needles and they've kind of pushed through the fabric, which hasn't been so good. <laughs> 
The next thing I use a lot, I didn't use it when I first started sewing and then I came across it and I feel like it, yeah, really made a difference, is this Prim Fray Check. Just this little bottle here. And whenever I've um, sewn any buttonholes, I just put a little bit of that on the top and the bottom of the buttonhole and let it dry before I open the buttonhole. And it really does, I find, stop the fraying. Really useful. And I have occasionally had a few splodges on the fabric by accident where it's dripped out. And I thought, oh no, is it going to ruin the fabric? But it always seems to dry up. It doesn't seem to cause any issues. So I find it really useful. And also seems to work okay for someone who's a little bit on the clumsy side like me. <laughs> My next sewing tool that I use all the time and I find so useful is another measuring type tool. So I maybe should have included it early in the video when I was talking about my rulers. But they're two measuring tools. I have them in Imperial and in Metric. And they are these little, what they're called seamstress gauges. And they are by Rocking Stitch, who is a lady on Instagram. And I think sadly, she's now closed her shop because she moved from London to Oslo. So I don't think she carried on producing these. So I'm really glad I got hold of them while she was still making them. But these little seamstress gauges, and they're so useful. They've got little cutouts in this perspex on different sizes. So for the um, imperial one here, there's a quarter inch and a half inch and a, and a five eighths of an inch there. All the sort of useful measurements on, on, the, on the metric one, they've got one centimetre, one and a half centimetres and two centimetres. And I find them so useful when I'm measuring things like hems and that sort of thing. They're just really easy and sort of neat and small to pick up and use. And because they're see-through, it's quite nice because you can see the fabric quite easily underneath too, in case you're like, like pattern matching or anything like that. So they're really useful. I was really, um, really lucky actually to be gifted my first one of these by the lovely Liz, who is the baker that sews. I'm sure you um, subscribed to her here on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below. She's really lovely. And she got um, one of these in her So Haley Jane box, but she already had it. So she sent it to me and it was really kind of her. And I've used it so much and I loved it so much. I think that was the metric one. I went on to get the imperial one too. So I've got them both in this little case and there used to be two cases, but some one of the cases has disappeared off somewhere. So I keep them both in this little case and I'm always reaching them. And they're quite nice because they're a bit smaller than a ruler, so often quite good for little fiddly measuring tasks. I've just had a little rummage around in my sewing tin now to pull out the other items I use on a regular basis, because there are some things in my tin that I have that I pull out every now and then, but they're not really my go-to sewing tool, so I won't include them in this video. But I did find a couple more items I do use really regularly, and one of them is safety pins. So I've got a bag here of all different sizes of safety pins, which is quite useful for different things. Like if I'm using a wide piece of elastic that I want to thread through, I'll go for a large safety pin. And I've also got this pack of really tiny safety pins. And I bought these fairly recently for a particular purpose, and I've been using them a lot. And these safety pins are small enough to fit through the whole of the eyelet size that I use to make the True Bias Hudson Pants. And I make quite a lot of Hudson pants for my son using the mini Hudson pants pattern. And he really loves having the cord on and choosing different colour cords. But it's quite fiddly to get that cord through and around the um, waistband. But I found these little ones are quite sturdy to be able to pull it through and also foot through the eyelet. So I've been using those quite a lot. So I definitely find safety pins are really useful. I think I should find a little tin or some little pot for these ones actually, because the bag's probably not the best way to store them. But definitely a really useful item I use a lot. And then I also found in my tin, of course, a measuring tape. So this is my measuring tape. It's getting quite old now and I do remember someone saying that they do stretch out a little bit with age so I probably should get a new one at some point so I'd end up getting all my measurements wrong. But this one's done the job for quite a long time. Just such a handy tool. Yeah, often reaching for that. Um, and then the other thing that I use quite a lot is these two rolls of ribbon. I've got a black narrow ribbon. I think it's, I don't know, it's maybe like a six millimetre wide ribbon or something like that. And I've got a white one too. And I have these ribbon rolls because I get through quite a lot because I use them a lot for stabilising shoulders on knit garments. And I find that just it's so easy to just grab a bit of ribbon off these rolls. So just buy them once. It's quite good value buying them in a roll. And then just gradually they go down. And I don't bother colour matching because time, by the time the ribbon's added and you've turned under the seam, you can't see it anyway. So yeah, I've just got two of those and they do go down quite a lot when I stabilise shoulders and knit garments, which I do try and take the time to do to make sure they don't stretch out of shape with wear. And the only other thing I have in my tin that I use on a really regular basis is my pencil case, which is full of pens that I use for tracing my patterns and pencils as well for marking little adjustments and things. So yeah, quite a basic item, but definitely one I use a lot. And I often think the most basic things, the ones you reach for quite a lot, a lot of the whizzier tools, I don't feel I use as much anyway. And then as well as all those items in my sewing tin and then my larger sewing tools, I just realised there were two other things I wanted to share um, and I hadn't thought about them because they actually were out being used. They weren't in my sewing cupboard when I went to get everything out for this video. So it just goes to show how much I use them. They're already out in use. And the first one is this mug. 
It's a really large mug and I use it for um, collecting little pieces of thread and little bits of fabric. I might snip with notches, all those small items that you kind of accumulate when you're sewing, to save them ending up on the floor. And I found my sewing has been a lot tidier since I've had this mug. I got it, I think, for either Christmas or birthday. My husband bought it for me and asked for a big sewing themed mug and I'm really pleased this one he found. It's really cute. It's got lots of little sewing items like scissors and threads and buttons on it so it's really cute a little pin cushion there and it is really big too it's hard to show how big it is but it's a really decent sized mug this will make a really nice big cup of tea um, but yeah I just use it for all those little threads and things I find it so handy just have it by the sewing machine and pop things in as I'm sewing I think he got it from Etsy so I'll see if it's still available on there and if it is I'll link it down below because it's a really nice decent sized um, mug perfect for a little sort of sewing bin and the other item I use quite a lot is my little sewing tray. This was another item I asked for for Christmas, I think about a year ago. And I really like it. It's a melamine tray. It's by a brand called Poppikins. Um, and again, they're on Etsy, so I'll link them down below. They do lots of cute different colours and you can have them personalised too. And I just um, yeah, asked for one for Christmas and my family got me this pink one because, as I mentioned, I do quite like pink, <laughs> um, particularly with my sewing tools. And it's so handy because I have on here um, different threads and notions I'm using for a project that's ongoing. So um, when I got it, I had a thread and bobbin for a project that I was sort of halfway through on and I sort of paused it. So I just left them there so I can pick it up quite easily. And I'll often put on here my little scissors that I use just so that everything that I need for the project is to hand when I'm working. Otherwise, things can get lost, I think, under patterns and end up spending a lot of time searching. So I find that little sewing, um, what do you call it, sewing tray quite useful to use. And again, like I said, I'll link that one down below. So those are all of my favourite sewing tools. They're the ones that I use on a really regular basis that I reach for the most and that I really rate. I have tried to be quite strict in this video because I do have a few other items kicking around the bottom of my sewing tin, but they're not items I use as much. They're just items I reach for every now and then. So I didn't think they were as worth sharing. But I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the tools I like to use and maybe found a couple of new recommendations for things you might like to give a try. Or just sometimes I think it's really fun to have a nosy and see what other people use. I just really loved hearing other people talk about, yeah, their sewing rooms and what they got and things. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've enjoyed it, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and would like to hear more about my dressmaking, the clothes I make, I also sometimes throw in a bit of knitting too. I would love it if you would consider subscribing and then if you press the bell icon too it means you'll be notified when I bring my future videos out. So thank you so much for joining me for this video, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye!